for life to continue to be on a constant evolution. Every single particle which constitute this universe have to abide by existential laws established by some transcendental entities. Before anything could ever be born, the pre-existing must perish and vanish from existence. A perpetual cycle of creation and destruction, birth and death which keeps the universe balanced and somehow preserves it from chaos. In Hinduism, there's a godly entity pretty much accountable for this eternal cycle of life. The god Shiva, whose name in some accounts can be translated as that which is not. The auspicious god regarded as the destroyer within the supreme triad of deities, with Vishnu the preserver and Brahma the creator, whom together formed the holy trinity of Hinduism. Shiva is a quite complex figure as he may represent goodness, benevolence and can also serve as a protector. He is associated with time and particularly with the destruction of all things. Nevertheless, his role as the god of destruction is intricately involved with creation. The implication is that without death, life cannot possibly exist. And therefore personifies the inexorable passage of time and out of destruction as he creates new life. According to Indian traditions, the universe is thought to regenerate in cycles, which means that this destruction is not arbitrary, but constructive. At the end of each cycle he ends the world, which in turn allows the coming forth of creation. This conception of his role can make us understand why many perceive Shiva as the absolute nothingness, simply because according to the process of the universe, everything comes from nothing and goes back to nothing. He is the womb from which everything is born, and the oblivion into which everything would be sucked back. Everything comes from Shiva and inevitably goes back to Shiva. For practitioners of Shiva devotion, he is by himself the principal manifestation of ultimate divinity. Shiva is perceived in Shaivism tradition as the great god, the supreme lord who creates, protects and continually transforms the universe. In practice, Shiva stands with Vishnu and the goddess Shakti, where he is depicted as a combined figure of himself on the right and Vishnu on the left. While in another fused representation he appears with his female counterpart in the same configuration as with Lord Vishnu. This represents the synthesis of masculine and feminine energies of the universe, and illustrates the union of these principles as the root and womb of all creation. In such regard, it seems likely that Shiva and the goddess may have had roots in the pre-Aryan civilization of the Indus Valley mythology. If we pay enough attention, there's an Indus Valley seal depicting a three-faced figure sitting cross-legged in a yogi style, suggesting the great yogi ascetic that the god was meant to become in later Hinduism. In the Vedas, it's believed that the figure of Shiva like we know him might be the result of a combination between various older Vedic deities. Many think that he may have particularly evolved from the Vedic god of storm, and emerged into a single major divinity. Although he is thought to be an older pre-Indo-European god, whose attributes appear on seals from the Indus Valley civilization is previously mentioned. It was not until the 2nd century BCE that the god came into his own as the equal, and sometimes the superior of Vishnu while being worshipped by his fellow gods as mentioned in the Mahabharata. The powerful deity may be represented in slightly different ways depending on a particular culture. But the most common depiction of Shiva shows him in a sitting position with his legs crossed, the typical posture of ascetic meditation while holding a variety of significant items. The god may as well appear standing on his right leg, with the left one folded in front of the right knee and holds the trishula that quite resembles to a trident as his mighty weapon. He is often seen carrying a rosary while having Vasuki, his snake garlanded all around his neck. In this guise, he usually represents Lord of the Dance who performs the Tandava within a circle of fire portraying the never-ending cycle of time. B. 
being a divinity so heavily associated with the cyclic occurrence of destruction in creation, Shiva possessed the corollary attributes to both events, among which the divine ball of flame responsible for destruction. While the drum often fastened to his trident is held accountable for creation, Shiva equally has three horizontal white stripes and bears a third vertical eye on his forehead which burns desires to ashes. That eye can transmit his inner radiance with such power that could wreak havoc anything it has gazed upon. In order to lift the curse placed on Chandra the god of the moon, Lord Shiva told him to take refuge in his matted hair to protect him from the malediction. Chandra thereafter devoted himself to the god, reason why he is depicted wearing the headdress of a crescent moon which adorns his overall personality. The skull often seen by his side represents the fifth head of the creator god, Brahma, which he decapitated to get rid of his pride over the imperfection of human's nature, while in the meantime asserted his own authority. But Shiva was condemned to carry that head for a long period before he was purified in the Ganges river. But this myth seems to have more than one related version. To settle an agreement between Brahma and Vishnu regarding the accountability of whom had created the universe. Shiva made a pillar of light which appeared in front of both divinities, who curious about it decided to find the extremities of the strange pillar. Taking the form of a swan, Brahma went upwards flying while Vishnu in the form of a boar went down digging. And finally after searching they both couldn't find anything no matter how far they went. Vishnu came back admitting that he couldn't find the end and bow down, which on the other hand was not the case for Brahma who lied about finding the upper end. When Shiva appeared in the middle of the shining pillar and upon discovering the truth, he challenged Brahma and cut off his fifth head as punishment. While in another account, Shiva chopped that head off to punish the god for lusting after his own female creation, Sandhya. For the god, Brahma had become unholy and had given into the cravings of the flesh, abandoning the work of the soul. And for this sin, Shiva cast a curse upon the deity which was that people shouldn't worship Brahma any longer. The legend goes on saying that ever since, Brahma has been continually reciting the four Vedas as a form of repentance. Shiva has always been known for his great power, but he increased it by tricking the other gods and became the supreme deity held above all divinities. There was once a conflict in which the gods were under attack and turned to Shiva for help. He accepted and offered to lend them half of his strength. However, in order to be an effective weapon, strength needs to be balanced by control and none of the other gods had the ability to master his tremendous force. So Lord Shiva had to came up with a different idea. If the gods combined all their strength and then lent him half of it, he could become even stronger and destroy their enemies all at once. After their agreement, Shiva quickly concentrated all of his new destructive force into shooting a single arrow which completely defeated the demons. But when the battle came to an end, Shiva gave in to the temptation of power and refused to give it back. He had become the most powerful of all deities and has kept it that way ever since. Another celebrated episode describes how Shiva became associated with the bull Nandi. One day the original mother of all cows began to give birth to an untold number of perfectly white cows. The amount of milk produced for all these cows was so huge that it flooded the home of Shiva in the Himalayas. Furious that his meditation has been disturbed, the god struck the animals with fire from his third eye. But that wasn't enough to quench his fury so the other god sought to appease his anger by offering him a magnificent white bull which he accepted. Soon enough, the sacred bull Nandi would become the mount of Shiva and would be regarded as the protector of animals. However some stories claim that Nandi was the unique child of a sage, but was fated to die at a really young age. In fear that his father would be grief-stricken after his death, 
Nandi prayed to Shiva who was pleased by the prayers of the child and gave him a bell necklace as a gift. The god said that he would remove the curse of early death from Nandi but the child would take the form of a bull in exchange. Later after receiving his visit, Nandi and his father went to the god's abode where the young child was turned into a bull and inherited divine knowledge from Shiva. As with any major gods, there are literally thousands of myths associated with this important manifestation of Hindu divinity, which illustrate his virtuous character and offer instruction on how to live a righteous life. Here's a story that emphasizes Shiva's nature as a self-sacrifice god. There was an ongoing conflict between the gods and the demons leading to countless losses in both sides, which wasn't really pleasant for neither of them and came down to a truce. After seeking for Vishnu's advice on how they could keep fighting without any more losses, the gods decided to churn up the ocean of milk to bring forth the elixir which gives its drinker immortality. But interesting enough, the gods couldn't do it by themselves and acquired help from their enemies, but in return they promised to share the beverage of immortality so that they could all appreciate the ecstasy of an endless war. In order to mix the ocean, they used the holy Mount Mandara and the giant serpent Vasuki as a turning rope, one end to be pulled by demons and the other by the gods. As they started churning, instead of getting the elixir they were looking for, a deadly poison came out from the bottom of the ocean. It came up in such huge amount that it threatened to harm the entire world and there was no one willing to do anything about this. Once again the gods turned to Shiva and begged him for help. Without any concern about his own well-being, he collected the poison in his palm and swallowed it to save humanity from its deadly effect. It's believed that his wife Parvati immediately squeezed his neck to prevent the poison from spreading any further, but it awfully burned his throat leaving a permanent blue scar. And ever since, the god has been depicted as an ascetic with a blue painted throat indicating this event. The story of the mighty Himalayan river Ganga proves that Shiva values the life of others more than he does for his own. To cushion the fall on earth of the holy river that personifies the goddess Ganga, while avoiding its impact to inadvertently cause tremendous damage to civilization, Shiva allowed the torrent to pass through his hair topknot which divided the river into seven separate streams so that the force of the water flowing straight from heaven doesn't wipe out all of creation. Prioritizing the safety of the goddess Ganga and humanity over his own, which once again illustrates his quality of self-sacrifice and compassion. Many of these myths are equally associated with the various forms of his consort Sati, or more precisely his female counterpart. But he is also closely linked with the terrible Kali and the goddess Durga, who are the embodiment of the feminine energy and the incarnations of Parvati. Although she is often seen as the second wife of Shiva, Parvati was in fact the reincarnation of Sati his first wife who died out of respect and love for him. The story tells how her father Daksha didn't approve her marriage to the god, and to mock him, he held a special sacrificial feast to all divinities except Lord Shiva. Outraged that her husband was not invited to the ceremony, Sati immolated herself on the sacrificial fire. To this absolute tragedy, Shiva full of anger created two demons from his hair who brought carnage on the ceremony and eventually beheaded Daksha. Those who witnessed the massacre appealed to Shiva's wrath to end the violence, which he did after coming back to his senses and would even bring Daksha back to life but with the head of a goat. To grieve the passing of his wife, Shiva performed a funeral dance in her honor before confining himself into many days of meditation. Sati was eventually reborn as Parvati in her next life and was remarried to Shiva. Despite being an all-powerful god, we can see through this story that Shiva let anger and revenge get the better of him just as much as any human, which makes him so close to mankind's inner experiences and emotions than any other divinity.
As the one who combines many contradictory elements, there are both benevolent and fearsome depictions of Shiva. In his benevolent forms, he is an ascetic and lover as well as a householder with his wife Parvati and his children. In his darker side he is often depicted as an ash-smeared vagabond who either roams the graveyards killing demons, or appear as the leader of evil spirits. Devotees of Shiva worshipped him across India as the most auspicious aspect of a divinity, and he is revered in many guises of his own divine supremacy. As the great ascetic, Shiva is the ultimate and the omniscient yogi who lives an ascetic life on the legendary Mount Kalash. In this model of the yogi ascetic, the deity shows severe self-discipline and abstention from all forms of indulgence and pleasure of the flesh, concentrating rather on meditation as a means to find perfect happiness. This representation of Shiva is believed to be his destructive aspect, but also the form that brings relief to those who place their faith in him while serving as the protector of Vedas. He is the origin of meditation and yoga, which doesn't refer to a bunch of body and breathing exercises as generally supposed, but instead refers to a really powerful tool necessary to raise human consciousness. In reality, yoga is all about understanding the essential knowledge of how life is created, and how it could be taken to ultimate possibilities. As the Lord of the Dance, Shiva appears as Nataraja, the full cosmic capacity of the God that sweeps away all ignorance represent the exuberance of creation. It combines in a single image the roles of Shiva as creator, preserver and destroyer of the universe, which conveys the Indian conception of the never-ending cycle of time. Nataraja portrays Shiva's musical play that is the source of all existential movement, a process through which his steps follow the rhythmic sound of universal forces. The divine energy of his dance makes his hair fly to the sides, a symbol which implies that through believing in Shiva, his devotees can achieve salvation. He holds in both upper hands the Damaru that made the primordial sounds of creation, and the fireball powerful enough to destroy the entire universe. With his lower right hand, he makes the calming of Bayamudra gesture that restrains fear, while the other points towards his raised foot signifying refuge for the worried souls. The dwarf-like figure being trampled by his right foot represents a Pasmara Purusha, the personification of ignorance leading mankind away from the truth. The purpose behind this dance is to release the soul from the snare of illusion, and takes place at the center of the universe which is actually within the heart of each individual. Another guise which devotees generally worship Shiva is through the Lingam, a sacred stone phallus accompanied by the Yoni forming the focus of worship. It symbolizes fertility or divine energy found in temples of the god. Many believe that the myth behind this worship came from during the time Shiva was mourning the death of Sati, and before her reincarnation he went to a forest to live with sages. But after some time, the wives of the Rishis soon began to pick an interest for the god. Out of rage, the Rishis first sent an antelope and then a gigantic tiger against the god. But Shiva swiftly dealt with them and wore the tiger skin thereafter, symbolic of his famed prowess as a hunter. The sages then cursed Shiva's manhood which fell off in consequence. As the phallus struck the ground, it gave rise to a violent earthquake and inevitably scared the riches who later begged for forgiveness which was given. That in turn, Shiva told them to forever worship his fallen phallus as the symbolic lingam. While proving his superiority to Brahma and Vishnu, the cosmic pillar of light which appeared during the fight between both divinities in fact emerged from the lingam of the god. But this story of Shiva's lingam is not an interpretation shared among all devotees of the god. Due to its phallic form, a misconception was easily built around it as to be an item of worship related to sexuality but it's a mistake to think of it purely in sexual terms, 
as the Sanskrit word lingam could mean symbol or sign. In other words, the lingam is the symbolic form of the god Shiva, the divinity without form, and the source of the infinite into which everything merged at the end of time. In Indian spiritual traditions, Shiva is a deity with the linked roles of both creator and destroyer of life. However, when we say Shiva is the destroyer, that universe he destroys doesn't always allude to what we can see and touch. It's not just the material world that is involved but also the intrinsic spiritual universe existing within each individual, which is made of an accumulation of events and impressions that could ruin anyone's future through the daily projection of these thoughts. So in order to let mortals appreciate life and the greatness of creation, Shiva gets rid of illusions and imperfections of this world while paving the way for beneficial changes. Shiva chiefly symbolizes the coming together of opposites, as his destructive power is balanced by his power of creation, just like his exuberant dance is paired with the love of meditation, and his quick judgment is tempered by mercy. Therefore, Shiva is absolute stillness and absolute movement. The fundamental access to the source of destruction in creation. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If this was in some way helpful, do consider subscribing, commenting and sharing as it allows the channel to grow. And as always, stay curious.